And in the Lord, and the Lord added to the church such as should be saved. Yes. Their worship was so powerful. Their worship was so attracted that unbelievers were attracted to, uh, I want to say it a different way. Unbelievers were attracted to their death. Ooh. Hmm. Wow. Now, in this regard, dead people in the natural, they smell. Mm. But I'm telling you, when you're really dead, there's a sweet smelling aroma. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. You really Hallelujah. want the fragrance of the rose of Sharon Hallelujah. on your life. Hallelujah. You have to die to yourself. Mm -hmm. Wow. Die life to your self, own ambition. Life in Christ. Amen. And this is where this is where the worship really comes alive. When yes, you are Lord. dead, worship comes alive. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Somebody Lord. shout, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. I'm, I'm alive. alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Worship, worship preceded. Conversion. The, the Lord didn't add to the church just because they were singing a song. He didn't add to the church because they were passing out Bible tracts. He added to the church because there was a group of people that had died to themselves and were demonstrating the worth of God and heathen people, ungodly people, sinners, had never seen people render themselves to God in such a way and they wanted to be a part of it. Hallelujah. 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 In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, Peter teaches that the believers are a royal priesthood, a holy, holy nation, nation. Yes. a peculiar people, people. belonging yes. to God. Yes. For what purpose? For what purpose? For what purpose? That they may declare the praises mm. of their God. Mm. So behind their praise, behind their worship, it was connected to evangelism. Hallelujah. Amen. There is something that takes place in the realm of the spirit when we're really worshiping God, God provides the conviction. Yes. God provides an atmosphere of okay. transformation. Yeah. God provides an atmosphere that is conducive for unbelievers getting saved, yielding and surrendering their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. But it takes place in true worship. Hallelujah. Yeah. Not just in a little pity dance, not just in a, you know, uh, you know, speaking in tongue for two minutes and no, 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 no. Now, I'm not criticizing the dance. I'm not criticizing speaking in tongue. All of it's necessary, but there is a more deep, more profound, more significant understanding of our worship that yes. we have not released because if we were release it, all of our churches would be filled. Wow. The truth of the matter is that we come right, prophet, we come right to the door of worship and we think we've entered in, hey. but we're only at the door. Wow. We're only at the door. And we would press our way and open the door. Hallelujah. And go into the presence. Listen, as a royal priesthood, hallelujah, we have access to go all the way into his presence. Yes. The curtain has been rent from top to bottom. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus has already declared it is finished. We have the right to be worshipers at the highest degree. Worshipers, <laughs> hallelujah, that have died to self. Worshipers that are ushering in the presence of God and the power of God in such a way that yokes are being broken off of people's lives. The blind are seeing again. The cripple are walking again. Everything is contingent upon our worship of God. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. That we may declare the praises of our God, the worship of our God. 
the goodness of our God. The, listen, the biblical goal of evangelism is to produce worshipers. Yes. I'm going to say it again. The biblical goal of evangelism is not just to produce a new convert. The biblical goal of evangelism is to produce a worshiper. <laughs> Glory to God. That makes sense. You produce, you produce a worshiper, and the worshiper will become an evangelist. Amen. Let me, let me prove it. Wow, that's I, hard. I, I've traveled all around the world. I've traveled all around the world, and the people that are embarrassed to say anything about God evangelistically, the people who are the poorest people are winning people to Christ, the people that want to keep their mouth shut, the people that run and, and fear, the people that shy away from unbelievers, but they are not worshipers. Wow. Who, who are winning the people to Christ all around the world? Worshipers. Amen. The Amen. more overt we are in our worship, the more dynamic we are in our worship, the more courageous we are in our worship, the more bolder we are in our worship. We are the ones that are the evangelists. We are the yeah, ones that are the evangelists. We are the ones that are casting out devils. We are the ones that are going after the unseen. Because we are worshipers. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. God is looking for, God is longing for believers that will worship him in spirit Amen. and in truth. Amen. The biblical goal of evangelism is to produce worshipers, not just another saved person. Hallelujah. Wow. If believers Hallelujah. want to be better communicators of the gospel, we should be, be first of all better worshipers of God. Yes. yes. Amen. Better worshipers of God. Yes. Amen. The early the early church committed itself to worship. And they became dynamic evangelists. Mm -hmm. But they committed themselves to worship first. Worship. Amen. They sung, they worshiped, they praised. And the outcome, the aftermath, the catalytic agent, hallelujah, as we became worshipers, we become better evangelists. As we become worshipers, we have greater influence in heaven. As we become worshipers, we become contagious believers, attracting the unsaved to a holy God that delivers them from the bondages of sin. The outcome of the New Testament worshipers uh, was evangelism is undeniable. The more the early church worshiped God, the more dynamic and explosive their evangelistic efforts became. The more they worshiped God, they went everywhere, turning the world upside down. Hallelujah. The more they worshiped God, the more they were on fire. The more they worshiped God, Everywhere they went, they were setting fires. Hallelujah. I want to tell you that arson is legal. The fire that we want to start, they won't take you to jail for starting a fire. Hallelujah. Not that kind of fire. Amen. Moses, Amen. hallelujah. He didn't go to jail. He took off his shoes and said, this is the holy place. Amen. Hallelujah. Voice talked out from the fire. Hallelujah. I want to let you know that it's time for the church to go and our praise and worship and start some fires. Hallelujah. Amen. Start some Amen. fires Amen. that burn up sin. Start some fires that burn down Satan's dominion. Start Hallelujah. some fires. Hallelujah. That set the captives free. It's time for the fire to fall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Elijah said, listen, I'm tired of the heathen. I'm tired of all the false gods. I'm tired of all the false prophets. Who, if God be God, let's serve God. Let's go to Mount Carmel. Let's Amen. start a fire. You put Amen. all the barrels of water. Put down the sacrifice. Put down the wood and call on your God. Hallelujah. Fire from heaven. They were involved with false worship. They were involved with oh, idolistic God. worship. But then Elijah, hallelujah, true hallelujah. man of God. He says, I'm going to show you what worship can do. I'm going to worship God my way. 
I'm going to worship the true God. I'm going to add some water to the wood. I'm going to mm -hmm. add water to the burnt offering. Hallelujah. I'm going to add water. I'm going to drench it down. I'm going to soak it down. And the God that answers by fire. fire. Yes. Fire. Hallelujah. 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 Hey. Listen, 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 listen. Isaiah 6. Verse 1 through 8. Isaiah 6, verse 1 through 8. Where the prophet has a profound encounter with God in worship. He has a profound encounter with God in worship that leads, uh, leads to his spiritual transformation and compelling desire to do evangelism in his nation. Here is the prophet and he has this encounter he says woe is me hallelujah you got the seraphims the cherubims you got angelic visitation and then you have this fire <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah takes the coal the coal from off of the fire and yes. places it on his tongue hallelujah yes. hallelujah yes. the man is on fire the burning coal uh, in his hand and, 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 and places it, hallelujah, at the altar with tongues. And the man now is on fire, puts it on his lips, but his lips doesn't burn. Puts it on his mouth, but his, his mouth is, does not burn. But on the inside, hallelujah, he's on fire. Here yes. we have Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, he said, hallelujah, I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm a worshiper. I love to worship God, but mm -hmm. nobody wants to hear me. I'm not going to open my mouth. I'm not going to say another word. Uh -huh. I'm going to keep silent. But then Jeremiah realized, the more he became a worshiper, he said, it's like fire. Yes. Like fire. Shut up in my bones. Shut up in my bones. I yes. can't hold my peace. Hallelujah. I yes. tell you tonight, Hallelujah. as we become true worshipers, you won't be able to hold your peace. You're going to have to go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it in the valley. You're going to yes. have to tell rich people. You're going to have to tell poor people. You have to tell, hallelujah, those that are infirm. You have yes. to tell people that say there is no God. You're going to have to tell the agnostic. you have to tell the atheistic. you have to tell the philosophers and the intellectuals. Yeah. That your God lives, that God is able to save, He's able to heal, He's able to deliver, He's able to amen, deliver. Amen. It comes with the boldness as a result of being a worshiper. You Bye become yeah. an evangelist. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Worship. Hallelujah. Worship and fire. After the resurrection. After the resurrection, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary encountered Jesus mm -hmm. and they were worshiping him. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. They fell at his feet yeah. and they were worshiping him. What, what happened after they became worshipers? They became evangelists. Hallelujah. Yes. They worshiped first and they became evangelists second. They yes. worshiped first and they became contagious with a message. Go tell my disciples that I have risen. Go tell them to meet me in Bethel. Hallelujah. Yes. Go tell them, hallelujah, that I'm not dead. Hallelujah. I'm alive. Yes. But they did not get an opportunity to become evangelists first. They became worshipers first and evangelism second. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Verse 9 and 10, hallelujah. The evangelistic message on the day of Pentecost, uh, there were 3,000 people gathered together, hallelujah. And uh, uh, there was a supernatural manifestation, uh, tongues as clothes like fire, hallelujah, uh, uh, landed upon them. Suddenly Jesus met them. And said, uh, look at verse 9. Greetings. They went up to him, took hold of his feet, and they worshipped him. Yes. Look at verse 10. Then, then Jesus told them, after they became worshipers, then he told them, stop being frightened. Holy Ghost boldness came on them. 
the ability to overcome every obstacle, the ability to meet every challenge with power. Go and tell my brethren, hallelujah, to leave Galilee. And they went and said the report to them, hallelujah. In Matthew 28, verse 9 and 10, the evangelistic message on the day of Pentecost, where 3,000 people yeah. were converted uh, to the Christian faith, yes. was participated in a major, major worship event. They were there yeah. worshiping on one accord. Hallelujah. Yes. Their worship was so passionate. Their worship captured the attention. Now listen to me. Their worship, hallelujah, of 120 people captured the attention of over 3,000 people were added to the church. The worship was so much filled with fire. Their worship was so much filled with passion. Their yes. worship was so much filled with God that God transformed the mountainside. God transformed the lives of people from 12 different nations as they gathered at the Feast of Pentecost. Hallelujah. And the fire fell. Hallelujah. And they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. Acts, Acts chapter 13. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 13, verses 1, 2, and 3. The Apostle Paul was singled out by the Holy Spirit. There was a prayer meeting. They were worshiping and worshiping in the midst of their worship. Then the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me. Hallelujah. Uh, Barnabas and Paul. Barnabas was the leader. Paul wasn't the leader then. He became a leader later on as he becomes the apostle Paul. But set apart Barnabas and Saul. They were set apart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This setting apart, this setting apart, hallelujah, took place as a result of their worship first. Hallelujah. Then they fasted and prayed, and they laid their hands on them, and they were sent out. Acts 13. Hallelujah. And that became the first missionary journey. The first missionary journey. Hallelujah. And they hallelujah. went to take the gospel. The worship environments take place as a result of worshipers worshiping God in spirit and truth. I'm convinced, hallelujah, that we sing too many songs. Mm. Train your worship leaders, hallelujah. They can rehearse five songs, but only plan to sing one. Wow. Mm. Hey, teach us, teach us, Holy Spirit. Sweet. They can rehearse Hallelujah. five songs, they can rehearse seven songs, but all it takes is one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing that one again. Don't go away from it. Sing it again. The Holy Ghost is moving. Sing it again. Go sing it again. Stay right there with it. Hallelujah. It Somebody again. being delivered in the congregation. Stay oh, right there yes, with us. Yes. Stay in again. Right. Somebody's eyes are coming Don't open. Hallelujah. Oh, Stay yes. right. Don't okay. go to the next song too quick. Okay. Stay Don't right there with it. The Don't anointing is falling. The power of God yes. is falling. Holy Ghost is yes. moving. The Spirit of God yes. is convicting people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. yes. Let me tell you something about worship. Even the worship leaders have to know when they are no longer qualified to be a leader. Ah! Oh, my God. Somebody yeah. say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Worship leaders must understand when they're no longer qualified to be leaders. To be leaders. When the Holy Ghost takes over the service, stop trying to lead. You become a follower. Woo. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. A shepherd is only needed. Hallelujah. All, uh, uh, to get them to the water. The shepherd is only needed to get them to green pastures. But once they get to the water, they can drink by themselves. Once they get to the green pastures, they can put their head down and eat for themselves. Hallelujah. Listen, I've said in thousands of worship services, I'm asking myself, why are they going on to another song? Amen. Just right. sing that one again. The Spirit of God is already moving. Sing it again. Sing it again. Mm -hmm. Sing it again. Hallelujah. Yokes are being broken. 
God is doing something special. We have to be able to discern by the spirit. We have to be able to be in a position to receive words of knowledge, uh, logos sophias, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom. Hallelujah. How to, uh, how to facilitate the spirit of God that's descending upon the congregation. Wow. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hmm. Listen, I've got so much more, but I want to stop right here. I want to stop right here. I want to stop right here. I'm hmm. telling you, a lot, a lot can take place by spiritual discernment. My God. Yes, that's true. Yeah. We have to discern the environment. Lord, that's true. Now listen, we don't want just a worship environment. No. What you want is a prolonged atmosphere. Right. Now the weatherman comes on the news and says, you know, you know, we have this weather front coming in, and you know, the environment, the weather's going to change. But what we really want, we just don't want a temporary weather front. We want, we, we, we want the spirit of God to come and to linger there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I was in Jamaica. I was in Jamaica a few years ago and I preached a particular message. Yes. Hallelujah. And before I even got into the message good, 300 people had rushed to the front and were shouting and worshiping and praising God. And by the time I got done with the message, hundreds of people were laying on the floor, kneeling, prostrate, bowing, standing. After I got done with the message, I went and took a shower, changed my clothes, talked with the pastor in the back. 45 minutes later, I was going out the building and 300 people were still in the sanctuary worshiping God. Wow. I looked in the sanctuary. I heard all this noise and the worship was so dynamic. I mean, the power of God was still moving strongly. And when I got to the parking lot, I seen about 70 people. They were leaning over the front of their cars. They were so drunk in the spirit, they could not get in the car. Other people were laying up against the building, still talking in tongues. I mean, I mean, they couldn't even drive their cars off the parking lot. Hallelujah. And uh, I, I, I looked at this for 15, 20 minutes. And my driver took me to my room. Hallelujah. And they called me two hours later in the room and said, the people are still there. Nobody's leaving. Now listen to me. The presence of the Lord. I want to suggest that we move away from God's presence. We're almost ready to enter through the door and we think we're already on the other side. Stay where the presence of God is at. Yes. Stay where the presence of God is at. Amen. And if we take advantage of that presence, then we will create a, not just an, uh, 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 an atmosphere, we will create an environment. Mm. Now, the environment is important. Listen to me. I'm just about done. The environment is important because the environment, the atmosphere is for us, but the environment is for the next generation. Wow. Mm -hmm. I said the environment is for us, but you want to create a worship environment that can be passed down to the next generation. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 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 Now, when they begin, when they become worshipers and worshipers and worshipers, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, God. What you want, you, you, you want, you want to be able to prepare your property around your church, the parking lot, the environment on the outside, on the inside. You want it so sanctified. You want it so filled with God's presence that the people on Sunday morning can't even make it to the door. Hmm. Wow. Say that hmm. again. Hmm. 
You want to create an environment where the environment is so filled with God's presence. Environment and atmosphere. The atmosphere is just the contemporary, the, the uh, uh, temporary condition. The contemporary condition is the environment. That environment can lift and change. The environment can dissipate and go away. But if you create, hallelujah, uh, let me, the, uh, the, 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 uh, 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 if you create an environment, mm -hmm. an environment stays, mm -hmm. but an atmosphere can lift and go lift away. And go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the environment that you create is something that you pass down to the next generation. Amen. Hallelujah. When the yes. presence of God is so strong, yeah. it creates. Okay. I used to do Hallelujah. outdoor crusade meetings, or open air meeting, crusade meetings. They'll have the, the pimps and the prostitutes and the drunkards and all the gamblers, all those things, all those people out there. We go out, we start praying. We start praying, walking up and down the street, praying, 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 praying. praying. And before we know it, after, after two or three days, the prostitutes start moving on to another area. Why? Because there's a new environment being established. But... After the crusade is over, not only do we have uh, 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 an atmosphere, but we have a completely different environment. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes two weeks, three weeks before the prostitutes feel comfortable coming back in those spots again. Why? Because the manifestation of God has been so heavy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. wow. Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So it is out of these historical songs that the psalmist, and as you read to the psalms, you can easily overlook it. But these psalms were always declaring the greatness of God, the significant power of God, the ability of God. And then once they made these declarations about God, these testimonies about God, what would happen is that Unbelievers would hear of them and they would be converted. Unbelievers would hear about the greatness of God, the goodness of God, and their worship would turn into evangelism. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What a word. What a word. Come on, say. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Lift your voice. Lift your voice up to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you honor, Lord. We give glory to you, Lord. We exalt you. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Listen, there is an impact not just not just for you know a lot of times 
you know, people say at the end of the message, you give an altar call. This is not an altar call for sinners. This is an altar call for believers, to be worshipers. Hallelujah. You see, many of us, we have been singing. But this is an altar call to be worshippers. Hallelujah. I, I turn back to Dr. Amen. Slippers. Dr. Slippers, there is an altar call for, for, for believers to be worshippers tonight. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Dr. Amen. Slippers. There is an altar call for believers to be worshippers. Father, I thank you tonight. I stretch forth my hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I make prophetic declaration over their lives. That from this day on, they will be sensitive yes. to worship. They will know that they were created for worship. Yes. They will know that worship is a lifestyle. They will, from the time they wake up in the morning, they'll begin worshiping you. Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you that they even have dreams and visions of worship, God. I thank you that they worship you at night. They worship you in their dreams. Yes. They worship you, hallelujah. When they get up and use the bathroom, they worship you, hallelujah. Everything becomes worship and praise. Everything becomes worship and praise, hallelujah. That a new dimension of ministry comes into their life because of praise and worship. A new breakthrough of spiritual gifts, callings, and anointings will take place because of praise and worship, hallelujah. A new boldness, new opportunities for evangelism will come into the house of praise and worship. Hallelujah. Yeah, Other uh, people, material, financial resources, to all different types of breakthroughs will take place because of praise and worship. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for it, God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Healings and deliverances will take place as a result of being a worshiper. Sickness and disease cannot stay in their body because they are a worshiper. Hallelujah. Yes, Father, yes, thank you. Yes, Hallelujah. Yeah. They'll be able to discern. Hallelujah. Uh, worship service, worship style. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm, 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 I'm hearing this by the Spirit. Listen, look over, look over, take a peek at the worship service before you get there. Wow. You yeah. should be able to see what God is up to. You should be able to discern, hallelujah, the worship. Hallelujah. A, good, a good leader, hallelujah, a mature believer, if it's on Thursday, you should be able to see what the worship is like on Sunday. Jesus. Hallelujah. It should not be a surprise to you. God wants to reveal to you the worship Hallelujah. 